When they actually installed Jackson Lee Sin, uh, Sina had mentioned that they might be going for the SKT skins. Lee Sin was so good, so when they were going to pick up, I thought, ah, this is the skin that they were going to get. It was really good. And then when they picked Set and Vayne, I was like, okay, they're doing it. 마지막에 그 옐로 스타 선수가 저희 좀오 챔피언 안 할게 하려고 자이라 로블루나 했다가 1초 안 만에 바꿔 줘서 진짜 좀 많이 고마웠어요. It was like the best picks for the situation, so I was kind of surprised how well the opportunity worked for them. Welcome back to All Star Paris 2014, where I'm joined here by Froggen at our awesome All Star signing wall. You see, all the fans can sign it, all the stars can sign it, writers. It's really, really cool. Froggen, I'm going to start by asking you about your game this uh, a couple of hours ago Fire versus Ice. Wow. You guys actually looked like you've been playing together for forever, and you were on Anivia, so that must have been very fun. Yeah, it was a really fun game. I enjoyed it a lot, and the players I'm playing with are some of the best in the world, so it's really easy to play with them. Uh, what especially was really good was cool in the jungle on Lee Sin. Were you impressed by our skills as well? Um, I, like, I saw his Lee Sin yesterday, so I, I didn't have to fangirl all over him in the game, so we could actually play together properly. Also, Mad Life Roams were absolutely amazing, so they basically carried it. Yeah, and of course, everyone wants to know about Anivia, man. It was so, so good. Are we going to see it more often, please? I don't think so. Maybe when some other champions are getting nerfed, you'll get back into more flavor of the month meta, but um, right now, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I also want you to shed your light on the Invitational Tournament. Right now, Fnatic is playing SKT. They just lost game one. Well, SKT looked incredibly strong. You also play against Fnatic often in the EU LCS. What do you think it is that they can't really step up here? Um, I think they need to take Twitch away unless they want to pick it because it's an extremely strong pick and I think they're rated number one AD carry in Korea right now. That's one thing and then um, they need to try to step up their mechanics a bit more because with this game they got outclassed even though I think they actually outpick SKT with their comp. Do you think we should draw some conclusions? It of course still early in the season about kind of the way things are going in the world, which region is stronger or is it too early? I think Korea is the strongest right now. Like. The SKT is not even winning OGN and they're here winning against the best teams from the other regions, so they're pretty strong. Absolutely looking very strong, but it isn't over yet. Fnatic still has a chance. Um, Froggen, you of course were voted here by the fans and you know they're really supporting you here as well. Is there anything you want to say to the awesome crowd? Yeah, the crowd has been absolutely amazing and thank you for voting me to get to All Stars. It's been absolutely awesome. Yeah, it's been great having you here as well. And uh, finally, I am going to ask you to sign our Super cool wall. I have the marker for you right here. There you go. And as Froggen signs the wall, we're going to sign off and head back over to the guys at the desk. That is a super cool wall indeed. Thank you very much, Shox and Froggen. We are setting the stage now for our second game in the semi-final match between Fnatic and SK Telecom T1K. Both teams are very shortly going to be getting underway. SKT is only one game away for securing their spot in the All-Star Finals and setting us up for another China versus Korea title battle. Fnatic simply were lacking in individual play. They tried new champions, something that Deficio, you've talked about a lot. I do want to touch on the fact that Soaz was ganked early and ganked often, and we know he's a player that goes on tilt. Well, I think everyone knows when it comes to Soaz and emotions, he likes to show them, he really cares about the game. So, yes, it could have an effect on him if he dies early. However, I think with the crowd behind him, and also with the fact Fnatic was pretty much the underdogs from everyone going into the game, I don't think he actually felt too many nerves or too many emotions actually in the game itself. I don't think he expected too much from, from himself. And therefore, I actually think they can go into this next game here completely cleared in their head and just say, you know what, if we do our best, it's all we can do. And if we win, perfect. If not, well, SKT would just better. Well, if he wants a comfort pick, maybe he can play Yorick. Uh, on the other side of the riff, <laughs> SKT played absolutely phenomenal in all aspects of the game. I want to highlight Piglet. His Twitch was mind-blowing, 903, probably 
the best 80 carry performance of the tournament for me thus far. What do you think, Monty? I mean, it's fantastic, and that's why we in Korea do see a lot of bands targeted at Twitch, at Piglet. He he's That has been his default, his go-to AD carry these days. It's usually not considered wise to let him have it, but if you don't let him have the Twitch, he does have those other weapons. We've seen his vein. What we haven't seen yet is his Kog'Maw, which is also excellent and a very meta pick in the Korean region right now. Well, he hasn't even needed to go that far down. The teams are ready, so let's send it back over to Jat and D-Man at the cost of this for Game 2. Thank you very much, Quickshot, and welcome back to Lezenith. And well, we just heard the crowd just yeah. before you came back to us were erupting, cheering on Fnatic, trying to give them some moral support, but it's a big ask. Yeah, it's a lot of moral support is going to be needed. It depends how much moral support can actually help, because <laughs> they'll give as much as Fnatic can take. But if that doesn't stop the Soaz dying in the early game, the incredible skill of the SKT team, the domination and the str from SKT and the struggles from Fnatic, that we've seen really this whole event. They won one game in the group stage against the team that failed to win a single game as well. They have not been looking good. And this is kind of what you expect from a one versus four matchup. And even if you think back to that one game that was obviously the final game yesterday against the Taipei Assassins, that was a pretty drawn out thing and a very nerve wracking moment. Of course, Peke getting caught out. Confidence not there with the team right now. Yeah, we really do need to keep hitting on the confidence of Fnatic because they are good. We've seen fantastic. them play yeah. very well in the past. They're, they're three times season champions in yeah. the spring split, the summer split, and then the spring split once again in 2014. You know, they are the most consistent European team, yet they just can't seem to hit that high point. Like, well, I mean, let's face it. Like SKT can. The world champions. Yeah. So, Picks and Bands about to get it away. You see them on your screens. And we are back into game two. Can Fnatic pull out what they need to? They started off well, let's put it that way. They banned out Twitch from Piglet. And the crowd is definitely trying to give them some Pick and Band support. Maybe that'll rev them up to get the right bands through. <laughs> Twitch is obviously a very good choice. I think they'll go back to more of the types of things that won the European LCS for them. Cassidy taken away. No surprises, honestly, there was the champion that Peke actually drew the bands really at the World Championships when he pulled that out. Suddenly everyone realized how strong he was in the group stage. Maybe pulled out a little too early, who knows. Evelyn being taken away. That's been picked by Bengi in the opening group stages. A good number of times, I think twice. Coming out there, Lee Sin, of course, was his champion of the last two matches. We'll see whether he sticks to that one. Lucian also taken away. That's Reckless champion in the last game. So AD carries, two AD carries down already. And throughout Fnatic's time, they have been a team that does manage to win when it matters. You know, backs against the wall. They made it to third place at Worlds last year. They were a couple, couple close games against Royal Club Boy from actually playing SKT in the finals there. The Jax band does surprise me a little bit. Soaz is not one to play a great Jax. I feel like SKT could have tried to trick into something there, but instead they banded away. Well, I wonder if it leads into what they want to choose, what they yeah. feel is strong against him in that top lane. It's looking like Soaz really wants to go with that Lulu again. It could, of course, be for Peke, but it is going to be Lulu once again. It could also be for Yellowstar as well, we should mention. And I was just wondering, what will they play with that Jax taken away? Is there something they actually have in mind for that top lane? I, wonder. I think the Lulu is the right choice for Fnatic. As far as SKT having something in mind for top lane, they can just go with what got them here. They do not have a reason to change at the moment because they have been so dominant. Krepo said, you don't think it's possible to win a best of three in one game. Maybe SKT just did that. <laughs> they can just do as much as they did from last game and transfer it to this one and still win. Absolutely. So Shivana once again for impact. He has been. Immaculate, this uh, All-Stars so far. Kazik's being locked in. We talked about how we didn't think Pomelo was going to be able to get that through. Picks and bans. This time, Bengi has. And, well, Sinai played it in the last matchup to not much success. Honestly, he was chasing kills more than uh, creating them. We'll see how Bengi does on that one. Well, Sinai could still go with Elise if they wanted to try the disengage compositions with Poke or if they're just resigned. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So factual knowledge for this one. Sinai, this is one of his favorite champions, Nocturne. 
but he only got to play it once at Kalavitsa and they lost on it. And then they never drew it out again, despite the fact he practiced all week running up to Kalavitsa on that champion. So solidly played it in solo queue, and he's like, yeah, we never really used it much. So Because it's great in solo queue where there's a lot of fighting. Exactly. And if Fnatic is expecting a game like they had last time, they're going to need to be able to fight a lot. They're not trying that poke move around, split push composition against a team as coordinated as SKT. They need the fighting power. Obviously, Sinan's going to have to get to level 6 at some point in order to pull that off. And Evane is actually very good against Nocturne. It's hard for Nocturne to dive on top of Evane. This could be a nice pick for Piglet. He loves Vayne whenever he can think about getting it. Well, the owner was also locked in for Yellow Star. Well, champion he's famed for, I think it's safe to say, especially when Thresh was available. Pumandu currently considering that one. Can Cogmo, Cogmo, no! <laughs> Switched it away last minute to Siva, so Siva is going to get picked up, which is another very strong champion yeah. in OGM. We used to see a lot more of Siva before her round of nerfs to make her higher mana cost in lane and take her overall power down a little bit, but it still has the same utility niche within a team. If Fnatic is going to try and run at them with Leona initiations and Lulu speed, SKT needs to be able to equally match that movement speed. The Siva pick keeps them safe, in a sense, as far as the move speed war in this game. Will Reckless fall back to Vayne? I don't think so. The fact that it's uh, Yellow Star that's currently hovering over it, you'd assume Reckless would pick it himself. Yeah, you'd think so. Maybe he's holding it so that Reckless can't select it. <laughs> <laughs> Reckless really wanted to. He was like, You're not no. playing this. No, 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 you're not playing this. Because 280 carries our band away here, Lucian and Twitch. So his choices are getting a little bit more limited. Oh, would they? Oh. What okay. does this mean? Oh yeah, Lulu mid, Lee Sin top. Yes, so as does play a lot of Lee Sin top, that is actually true. Hasn't played it a great deal in the European LCS, but he has hit it hard in solo queue. Yeah. And of course, well, Reckless, it's how he got to the IPL 5 finals with Vayne before, but a lot has changed in the game since then. It's been quite some time since then. Reckless was just a wee little pup back then, not even old enough to play in the LCS. 15, I believe he yeah, was back was then. That was, that was year old just prodigy. after season two. And he has been playing ever since to make it to this stage where everything old is new again. He's vain against a Sivir. So actually the range matchup, he's not very outclassed by Sivir. He can do some nice work in that lane if he gets to the laning phase. So we talked about in the last matchup how the early aggression, there was the lack of lane phase. There's a lot of aggression from Fnatic this time around. A lot of early game pressure potentially could come out, but also a mix, because obviously with the vein in there, you can have some good late game pressure. We also, final pick that came in was Nidalee for Faker. We saw Faker on this one before in the group stages. Uh, not the group stages, actually, is when we're watching the qualifying. And it's the fact that he was jumping in and basically using Cougar form instead yeah. of the Spears. It's like he's gonna take the Sivir ult and just Cougar form into fights with Shivana. <laughs> just be on the team that's going in with the rest of SKT. That's what will happen if they start getting ahead, I think, fairly heavily into this game. SKT's composition looks really nice, obviously. They have the move speed, the team fighting, the pressure. The only thing that they might lack out on would be if Faker can't provide wave clear in the mid lane because of Nidalee, and they're going to have to kind of work around that a little bit. Fnatic, of course, though, uh, is a split-pushing team, but with much more initiation potential than they had last game. Well, we'll see how it works out. Game two getting underway in just a moment. And as the players load into the game, head over to Twitter and let us know who you think is going to come out on top. Pretty sure I know which way it's going to go, guys. Send your real-time reactions to at LOL Esports and use the hashtag FNCWIN or SKTWIN. This would be the last ditch time. It's well, do or die right now for Fnatic. And and so really nothing to lose. Yeah, nothing to lose, everything to gain at this point. No one expects them to beat SKT at this point, especially after going 1-3 in groups and getting absolutely obliterated. So if there's confidence issues going on for them, maybe they can use that to kind of clear their minds. That well, no matter what happens... I think the rest of the world would be grateful if someone, somewhere, could take one game off SK Telecom in an international Korea. tournament, but it's not from yes. Korea. They went 3-0 in the Season 3 World Finals. Can they make it to the All-Star Finals? They are 1-0 up. It's Fnatic as the blue team, the home team favorites. The crowd was silent before. They are back again supporting the European hopefuls. But SK Telecom T1 are a strong force to reckon with as the red team. Yeah, the early game was actually chess match kind of won by Fnatic. 
last time because they were able to successfully secure three buffs, but then they very quickly lost it as they were unable to support Soaz at his interior turret uh, when he roamed to the bottom lane and he ended up getting killed. So that was that. Was that. As far as the early game, and once SKT had the edge, they closed it. Well, SKT looking at creating something here. Remember, Fnatic started off very well, mentioned to steal away the buffs early on in the previous match, and maybe looking to do the same again with Cyanide hanging in there, but he's got to be careful. He doesn't get caught too close. Impact being the wise one to show, say, hey, I'm on my own up here. Yeah. Come and poke me in this bush. No, SK Telecom all no, there. No, Will no, Mandu manage really to get close. in. Throws the death sentence out. Had to level up Spell Shield to block it off. That kind of hurts. Nocturne gets a lot of pop out of his Q at level one. He also oftentimes like to go E second as well, so that could very well slow down the jungle just because he was uh, doing his defensive Ooh. duty. It was a very nice angle Mandu took. Well, Faker's now actually showing himself. Four members of There's Fnatic friends. close by, but look at that. SK Telecom oh, back in no. force. They get on Yellowstar, has to flash away straight out from that one. And that is one summoner spell down. With a little bit of help for Reckless as well, as they very quickly try and scatter into lanes. There's a lot of recalls going off right now. You can see Impact going back to base. Yellowstar going back to base, even though he doesn't have his flash. And yeah, absolute lane swaps coming on right here. They do not want standard lanes. Mm -hmm. Talk to a lot of Koreans as well about kind of exactly why they lane swap. And sometimes if there's just a chance that they lose the lane 2v2, there's no reason to do standard lanes. And that could potentially be what Fnatic is thinking right here. Trying to find a friend. Trying to find a friend, but as you mentioned earlier no on, he has got a level advantage over Impact. He does force Impact away with that blue buff as well on. Quite happy to burn those spells, but that does give the information to Bengi. Bengi knows he's going straight towards the red buff alongside Pumandu. Yeah, that was what happens with lane swaps. Your lane support helps out the jungler. Uh, he's going to want to smite that away without getting too low. Impact's got to be careful. Yellowstar was with him. There was a ward to give them the knowledge, though. And as you mentioned, let's get Telecom alongside Pumandu will just steal themselves their own red buff away. So as not really looking to get involved in that one. You can see the Twitter vote there, no surprise, but it is a pretty close one right yep. now. 53% of you, so 47% of you still believing in the European dream. We'll see if it's possible. Peke dodging now, but he's in all sorts of trouble now. Has to flash away. The Ignite went down, but where's he going to go? More you can friends. see Impact coming around. He's got no flash available. He has got a shield, but it might well not be enough. It is only a level one Impact. You can see Pumandu, if he can get in range to land that Death Sentence, the Spear's there! And Faker gets first blood. And it could not go to a better person on SKT. We said the one fear that SKT might have in this one is if Faker can't control mid lane enough. The fact that he just got his kill onto Lulu will help that substantially. Cyanide in trouble. He's going to get caught out. One more hit. No. Exhaust is used, but it doesn't matter. Peggy gets the kill, nevertheless, with Taste of Fear. It couldn't have started worse so far for Fnatic. Maybe they can try and lay a trap and get something back. Oh no, Pumandu. Oh, he's going to go in the bush. They may try and turn this one around. So as does come in, but the death sentence on Rectus is not going to be enough. Pumandu will go down, and Yellowstar gets the first kill. The Hats need to go to Reckless. But at least they got a kill, is the big thing at the early game here. They're down six. Well, they didn't go four in the last game, if you're yeah. going to look at it that way. 20% of the kills in the series. <laughs> All right, then. But quite honestly, that gives a little bit more time for Reckless and Yellowstar to farm up in the top lane. Uh, because Yellowstar went for the gold generation item early, it'll either make him a faster jump to a side stone or he can actually upgrade that to a Targon's much sooner so he gets faster gold generation. It basically doubles in effectiveness right, aw right away. So it's, it's not a terrible thing for the support to take the kill. Well, the red camp was not cleared out by Bengi last time he was down here. Cyanide will clear that out and reset that timer. So that's coming up just shy of 10 minutes. So we'll see how that plays into effect from the rest of the telecom are in that jungle next time around. So, Impact, he's not really been in that top lane at all so far, still hit level two, and of course got that two support kills already, so actually not doing that bad, despite the fact he's pretty much been in the jungle the whole time. Yeah, as far as being involved on an early game Shivani, you don't really think he's gonna be able to do that, just to be involved in those kills. And I'm really impressed, D-Man, by SKT's early game strategy, just because that was honestly their weakness a while ago. And they've kind of turned it into a strength here at the All-Star Invitational. I think back to last year's Worlds where they were getting turret dove early in 3-1s and didn't know how to deal with things. 
They seem to know how to deal with everything substantially better than their opponents. The flash burned there, so as you got to question why he even went in for that one. The moment Beggy showed himself, though, he was getting the hell out of Dodge. That could well be the first turret of the game. Meanwhile, Fnatic trying to do the similar in this top lane. So both these top and bottom turrets going down to the three-man stack of the teams. Yeah, delayed fast push, actually, from SKT. They just finally sent the extra person down to that lane. They overpowered 3v1, and both teams ended up trading turrets. AD carry farm is still pretty close. All the farm is actually very comparable. It's just that quick early kill that they were able to get. Okay, putting some good damage on that middle turret, honestly, in the time that Faker was away. That's taking it down to half hit points. That's a very important turret this early on. Yeah, and you can see vision control-wise, though, SKT already going for an extra sweeping lens. Bengi has swapped it out. He has been the vision control master throughout his career and stepped up in this event in particular to have more of a kill presence in the game, not struggling nearly as much as he was over in Korea. So just a vision emphasis for SKT. Pink Ward and Regular Ward being pounced around and placed by Faker. Oh, we've seen a number of Threshes coming out with this. Boots and Mobility, Pumandu no different. Zipping around the map, making sure Ward coverage is in the right place at the right time. And as you mentioned, they've, their coverage has been immaculate. And it's actually possibly been something we could definitely level towards Fnatic. Yeah maybe being a problem, but look at this, they're setting up for a very early Dragon, seven minutes in. Yeah, and it's because they've been able to create a lot of vision priorities, and this is not necessarily about buying wards, it's about killing the enemy wards and knowing where to place your wards to get yourself safe takes, like this Dragon. Is so as lingering, he hasn't got any smite, so I'm not too sure, he's just simply trying to desperately do something there with the Sonic yeah. Wave. Could, had no lane to go to, so exactly. had to just stick around. Faker, meanwhile, in this mid lane, keeping up very well in farm with Becky. Becky just gone back to get himself the Chalice of Harmony. That's going to be a problem for Soaz as well. There was this problem in game one, it's a problem right now. He doesn't have a lane. It's what SKT has done against every top laner at the All-Star, is they've made them lost. They've taken away their place in the game while still keeping a place for Impact in most situations. And it's allowed them to destroy people. In this game, Impact is behind, so to speak, but it's more important, I feel like, that Soaz is behind early since he is on that lease. No, it's very low here, trying to hold the blue buff for uh, Becky to get around here. He's like, buddy, mind yeah. helping me out Best. here? There is the Please. shield going down. So, Reckless just went back, got himself the build you want to cut this, and has got a good farm push at the start. He got himself the assist as well in there. 10 CS advantage briefly over Piglet. We'll see how long that stays though because he's returning back towards the top lane so both AD carries not going against each other this early yet. At least Reckless is getting a pretty decent amount of farm here. Uh, the goal lead is still 800 so the game isn't out of control despite maybe how fast last game was. Uh, as far as movements there's more kills in this one, a little bit less action and more standard laning, which is good right now for the way Fnatic wants to farm up. They need to get Nocturne into a place where he's healthy at level six and can get some good ganks off. He's also went with a Riggle's Lantern, so we will have to keep track of his overall Feral Flare stacks. He's currently at 11. Whether he transitions that before or after the 20 minute mark will actually have a pretty big impact on this overall game. And we'll see whether he can actually gets the time to stack that up to 30. Yeah. Of course, we're on 4.6 here. Humandu warding, sweeping, keeping the coverage, the vision. Bengi is joining him as he starts to push in towards his bottom lane, trying to find Soaz, hoping that he was at those uh, golems instead. Sinai does use that smite to take down the large Wraith. And well, four members, five members for a moment, actually in the bottom half of the jungle, Cyanide is going to spell shield that off. Quick pounce in there, forces the flash out. Soaz has to safeguard in to block those void spikes. And SK Telecom, five members for a brief period in the lower half of the yeah. jungle. And there's actually not many objectives for them to take down there right now. Considering the jungle was completely cleared out, and they actually had a timer on the red buff. So, I tell a lie, that was a nice invade. They cleared out the jungle so they could get the timer and steal that away. Delaying Cyanide's Feral Flare as well as taking the threat away. And buying time for Piglet not only to get free farm, but to start putting some serious damage onto this turret. Now three members will move on down here. And that is going to be a free turret for SK Telecom. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Impact's doing what he can to keep Fnatic away from it. But I don't feel they're going to take it with this way. Yeah, a little bit behind, though, is Fnatic right now. They're a little bit later to this top lane. Leeson arrives. Impact hits level 6. He could maybe even think about ulting if he needs to escape here. He ults in for the damage and for the wave clear. 
perfect timing. Nicely done, Impact clears that wave straight out, forces Fnatic back for now. But Bengi is already in that top lane. Piglet is coming around there. Peke goes aggressive on Faker, but he's not too worried about that one. Just pounces back behind his turn and heals himself up. So as he's looking to just create something, he has finally hit six, so that kick could be used. And that's maybe what he's going to try and level up here on towards Faker. He's well, going to step towards him. The wall. He comes across, there's the wall kick straight into a wild growth, but that's oh, no. not combining. The Glitterlands flash follows. The Ignite comes through, but they can easily cover that one off. Now Reckless is in trouble in the top lane. This is just going to barrel out of control. And again, it is Fnatic that will pay the price. This time it's a double kill for Bengi. They did get the mid turret. Paranoia comes out. Faker in trouble. Cyanide on the tower will go down. He got Faker down for the price. Actually, it was Becca that picked up the kill. But yeah, Faker got one back. When you look at the overall map, it's three kills to just one kill. And uh, you also need to think that Piglet's going to be pushing the top lane. But let's take another look at this fight up top. This was proper pink ward placement by SKT. As soon as Reckless tried to juke around with that ultimate, Pumandu put that pink ward right there. There's no way he could make any sneaky moves, even if they did put the pink ward down. They probably would have had him dead to rights. And the boomerang blade doing the full damage as he tries to uh, yeah. roll out of it, tumble away. Wasn't to be. Big advantage building. It is still only two to two in turrets. The middle turret still standing for Fnatic. That top turret did not go down to Piglet either, so I feel they maybe could have taken that advantage, but they didn't need to, honestly. They have a 2,000 gold lead now, 5-2 up in kills. And Peke missing, missing the Glitterlance once again on Faker. We saw how many shots he dodged earlier on. That red camp again, it was not cleared out on that invade. We talked about how they managed to get in there twice now. So as though, He's having problems. At least Fnatic's going to have a timer on their own red buff at this time. But they're still only down 1,500 gold, mm. which isn't an insurmountable lead, but it's not like they have a hyper uh -oh. late game team. They're going to need to find some vision control so they can force good things. Because once again, just like in game one, they're reacting to everything that SKT does to them as opposed to making their own moves. Five members of SK Telecom in that top jungle now. So as spotted the danger early because Pumandu showed himself from that tri-bush and that will be the top turret going down. 3-2 in turrets and again objective control for SK Telecom is strong as they invade and take away every little resource from that jungle. Fnatic trying to do the same though, they are on the blue buff and pushing them towards the bottom turret as well. Well this is at least a good move for them, they knew their blue jungle was compromised so they decided to take the blue jungle of SKT and there is also a mid lane push going on, so Fnatic actually taking a pretty nice move here as long as they can get it unscathed. This has crushed them in the past. Well, in the mid lane, Piglet is rotated down there, straight in, pushing in towards the middle turret. We'll see where the Reckless he does manage to close this turret down. That's three for two now, uh, three for three, sorry. And a look across, it is three for three. Peke is not going to get caught out by a spear from Faker, and that middle turret will stand its ground, but Dragon is now up and teleport down on Soaz, up on impact. There would be potentially a Lee Sin kick soon to stop that, but the Dragon is going down so fast. I mean, this could be a time for Cyanide to try steal. No, he doesn't even have his ultimate up. No, it doesn't have Paranoia. Will be quickly smited out by Bengi. Spear catches it is on up Bengi now, though. Well, there's Paranoia. They go in. Wild Growth was used as he dashed in there. He will get the Paranoia off, but Faker is in Cougar form and will be able to pounce away from this one. Peggy can't quite get close enough to land that pick. And but they're now, trapped. They are trapped, as you say. Beautifully done by Boomandu. Throws that box down. Where are you going to go, Fnatic? You've got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Bear Reckless does get himself one, but at what price? That's the question. Piglet's going to get focused on. He gets one down. Cyanide manages to turn it back around. Reckless manages to tumble to danger, but Faker's in chase. Cyanide's in trouble. Faker's going to close in towards him. Faker himself gets the kill. Oh, oh, no, it's a double spear from Faker. And that is not what Fnatic needed. A tricky play turns a little bit sour right there for Fnatic. They lose three once the teleport is burned. And this top lane was all about Soaz trying to stop impact as he, he goes hard for Soaz as the ultimate hit, and then he kicks him away. And with the kick down, Impact would be free to teleport into that bottom lane. Unless Impact actually continues to chase. I'm not sure what happened here. Did oh, he get the kill. Oh, no. Where's he gonna go now? <laughs> All right, and then he teleported in for the end of the fight. Just about in the end there. So, Soaz throws out a few jukes, but unfortunately for him, the rest of his team were caught out and locked up. And that was, a, that was really a beautiful ultimate from Pumandu just to completely lock them in position. It really wasn't that last fight. They trapped them. 
in the jungle. And so as, again, nice kick. Nice kick, safeguards away, gets out of danger, but look at this, Pumandu's coming in, and Lantern thrown out the back, pulls in Bengi once again, and this time Soaz has no tricks in his back to get out of the danger. He will go down to Bengi. And that is a lack of vision control, but more importantly, map presence that happens right there, because three people were freely able to go and mess with Lee Sin with absolutely no answer possible by the Fnatic team. You gotta feel that this is once again playing into the hands of SK Telecom. Oh, Zenith Blade not landing. Yellow Star going blindly into that bush, realizing Pumandu and Piglet both there. They wanted to lock down the AD carry. He caused so many problems last game on Twitch that may well be a little too prevalent in their minds. Faker, meanwhile, with that blue buff, is starting to toss out the spears, and we know what happens when a Nidalee gets ahead in a game. Ah, uh, flank right here. This problem. is Fnatic's chance to try and get some. They have a 4v5 with no teleport. SKT retreats immediately, and they're going hard, but they miss it. Oh, everything thrown out, everything missed out there. They didn't go solar flash. I tell a lie, they did go solar flash. We didn't quite see it on the yeah. screen, but it was already used up, and now Soaz is in trouble. He has to step away. Impact. So confident in his team, doesn't even bother moving. And he's just forcing Fnatic to go elsewhere because SKT disengaged so well. Didn't even have to burn Sivirot. Now they push down mid lane. Peke gets hooked. Oh, Peke hooked in. Wild Goat comes out. You see the power. No, it pops in towards that. Cyanide goes down to Faker. Yellow Star in trouble now. Piglet can do pursue on towards him. The boomerang blades will not quite be enough. But the tower went down. Oh, quick sidestep of the turret. There's the tower going down. No spears. They're starting to cause problems. This game is going the wrong direction for Fnatic, but absolutely perfectly for SKT. Five kills onto Faker, four kills onto their jungler, Bengi, who is having a fantastic all-star event, and they are in complete control of the map and the series. Bengi really has answered some of the critics, I feel, and maybe gained some serious confidence that may have been lacking after going out of the OGN Champions and NLB over in uh, Korea. We'll see, of course, how they perform when they move into the summer split of that tournament but right now they have the all-stars ahead of them and a potential place in the finals against omg well, let's see if they can do anything to impact here they do force the ultimate d-man i think it's actually really important to note how long Fnatic has actually been around as a team because we've seen so many big players especially in north america and europe kind of come and go and Four of the five players on this lineup have actually been in the League of Legends scene since the Season 1 World Championship, which is not something you can say about many teams. No, I mean, you've obviously got uh, Soaz and Yellowstar in there were with against all authority, and of course, Cyanide and Peke. Peke actually only turning up on day two as well, if memory serves yeah. me, back in Way Season back 1 in to turn up and get Fnatic through to that finals position. But it was a certainly a long time ago, and they're very experienced, but this top lane, Reckless, the new boy of the team is caught out of position and he will go down to quick success. And speaking of the new boy, you know, a lot of teams trying to bring new blood through and Reckless is one of them. Yeah, he was really the prodigy that just came in recently at the very start of the season to try and kind of rejuvenate Fnatic because these teams that have been around for so long, yes, the events kept keep getting bigger and bigger. And yes, the pressure and stages, everything is improving, including the competition. And it's so hard to be those guys that are in at the very start, kind of the old dogs on the scene. Fnatic are the oldest dogs when you actually think about it. You look at a team like TSM with recently all their roster changes, their entire season one lineup is gone at the moment. Everyone has changed out. Whereas you look at Fnatic, yes, it was just Cyanide and Peke on that Fnatic team, but the others were around on major teams way back then. Oh, Peke out of position. Wild Goat is not going to be enough. The solar flare goes down, but it is all too late. Peke had eaten one of those spears from Faker, and that was an easy turret. It may well turn into an easy inhibitor as they just keep pushing through. Yeah, teams like SKT, they have not been around as long, but they've been around oh. a while, and they know how to deal with situations like this and close games. They know how to close games. That's going to be an inhibitor turret going down any minute now. This will fall. Piglet puts the damage down. The inhibitor will follow, and honestly, they may keep going. Teleport going out from impact. He's off. He's going to defend that top turret because 
Soas was trying desperately to get on towards that inhibitor turret of his own. He will get backed off. He's going to have to kick him back away. But look at Faker. He's making oh, tracks across man. the map, closing the gap. And it's all about if he walks over Ward, then they'll know where he is. Uh -oh. There's the Ward. They know exactly where he's going to be. Faker can head him off. Yeah, he's going to run straight across. Oh, the spear is almost enough to do the job right there. Where's he going to go? Burn out from Impact. Who will get the kill? It's going to be Impact. Oh, no, Faker. I think he had an auto attack yeah. swinging through. Just followed him straight through. The Dragon as well picked up every single objective and kill all going SK Telecom's yeah. way. I mentioned, back, eh? I mentioned they only got four kills before. They've only got four kills this time around. Can they try and capitalize, get any more? Peke's going to go down. A pouncing Bengi once again comes in. Sinai tries to get themselves a fifth kill on that board. Piglet may well be that man. Yellow Star taken down the side there. Piglet's still alive, just about. Finally goes down. Rectus gets himself the condemn on Faker, but it is another kill for SK Telecom and another trade in their favor. They get their fifth kill, but it costs them three lives and even more pressure on the map here. Seven kills for Faker with a death cap. Piglet is crushing in items right now. Basically completed the second and on his way to his third. He's three items full, whereas Reckless isn't even at his second one. This is a team in trouble in this game, if you look at Fnatic. And they are against such a fresh young team, honestly, in the form of SK Telecom. Yep. We'll go through it in a moment because this is... Well, it was a clean, crushing yeah. replay. This was really just SKT catching Fnatic out of position, and then Fnatic desperately just trying to get back into the fight. If I'm Fnatic in this situation, you're down 8,000 gold, I do exactly as they do. You see people are low, you just go for the kills that you can get, hoping that turns the game around. Obviously, they go for the damage threats first. Piglet was so, so low, but it took them forever to kill him, and by that time, Faker melee Nidalee, as we've seen him do so many times when he gets ahead, just finishing them off because they just couldn't finish off the AD carry in time. Bengi has so much damage. More and Malmordius. He's got the Brutalizer in there as well as the Elder Lizard. He's just pouncing through his targets. 8-1-4. Impact pounces forward. So has caught out. Safeguards away. Bengi's going to have that lead back available in just a couple of seconds. Doesn't fancy chase it. Doesn't oh, matter because shot. Piglet just spins out his boomerang blade and catches him with the edge. Not the same performance that Piglet had on Twitch in game one, but that's because he's on Sivir. It's a much more supportive AD carry. The move speed and the assists are the critical thing to be paying attention to on Piglet right here. They're about to clean out their second inhibitor of this young 23-minute game. Yeah, it's going to go down any second now, and SK Telecom, they're in the position with the Super Minions in that mid lane to close the game out right here, and may actually be one of the fastest games we've seen so far in All-Stars. Exactly, and it'll be make for a very interesting finals with how strong SKT is coming into this. We were actually discussing backstage before we came on here just how long has it been since like a North American team has made it into the finals of these big events and it was really the early days of League of Legends where teams like the Fnatic who won season one world championships or even the old TSM and CLGs were the top of the international table. But then the new players from the new emerging regions came in when Korea got the game. They basically dominated since they entered competition. China has done very well as well, winning IPL 5, which was a pretty much it was world the beginning, really. Type the, event. the beginning of the end, I think it was safe to say for the Western world, perhaps honestly, so far. But, maybe. but quite honestly, it's the newer breed of players that came in from Korea and China back then with the old guard of North America and Europe. And I think we're seeing maybe a slow transition towards obviously the best of the best are sticking around like Peke and most of this Fnatic team. But so many of them who were mechanically just not able to keep pace with the players today who have had so much, I mean, they're just younger. They've been playing just focusing on their mechanics. They haven't been worried about the competitive game and they've learned from everyone else. You know, you can only innovate for so long until you get mimicked and then innovated on again. And that's what I think we see happening. So the next breed of teams from NA or EU would have to be the ones to take these guys down. Well, and it's interesting, obviously, we talk about the roster changes that are obviously going on in North America and Europe right now. There's been always a lot of roster changes in Korea. You know, those teams do not stick rapid. around for long. They are rapid. If you are not at the top, you are not at the best in solo queue or at what you do in team fights, you will get replaced. There's no doubt about it. There's no... Friendship is not a thing. It's all about exactly. the team, the winning. And, well, that is what's happening, whereas you look at the team scoop. So is this, like, side There's steps. a problem in the mid lane, though. They're pushing down pretty fast. Yeah, this could well be game. So as is actually out of his place. The inhibitor will go down once again. Baron, of course, was picked up. And let's get Telecom just 25 minutes into this game. Are 
looking to close out by the numbers and take the final to it. Baker's going to get dived on. They want to throw everything at him. They haven't got enough, though. Simply put, the spear does not return in its favor. But you can see Bigley with that ultimate running. Reptis Whoa. just disappears from the map with a single spear landing. Sinai tries to jump away, but Bengi just pursues through. Pumandu will get focused down. It is another kill, only the sixth kill, and more importantly, only the tenth kill of the entire series for Fnatic. And Fnatic is running to the wrong base right now because they are getting picked off by SKT, desperately trying to save themselves, but this could be game, D-Man. Yeah, looking towards the base, you can see the Nexus turrets are tumbling, and SK Telecom will reach the finals as honestly expected to face OMG at the All-Stars. It is going to be an All-Asian event, and it is the two seeds that expect it to be there, but what a fantastic performance by SK Telecom. No doubt about it, 26 minutes gone in this game, and they have dominated Fnatic. And it was really a statement by SKT in general here. Bengi in particular was struggling so much coming into this event. And to go 10-1-6 in the semifinals after a great performance in game one as well is truly a statement for the finals tomorrow. But the fans sending their support to the Even in defeat, of course, they are the home team. and. They can't take away, they, they play with their hearts, but unfortunately for them that's not enough when you come up against the Season 3 reigning world champions. And you've got to look forward maybe to the Season 4 2014 event that will be happening in Korea and look towards the reigning champions. Will they find their form and make their way back there? Could they do the unthinkable and win two in a row? Who knows? Yeah. All-Stars is the focus right now for them though. And they are looking strong heading into the finals tomorrow after that performance. Obviously, OMG looked really strong, too. Absolutely. You know, thinking of a quick preview of that finals game tomorrow, OMG, even though they looked to struggle at the end of group stage, they had it clinched after day one. Yeah. And they said themselves that they were hiding a lot of stuff and still had tricks up their sleeve that they were waiting against Cloud9 and ultimately against SKT because if anyone's coming into this looking to win, they need to be able to beat SKT. Well, if teams certainly know how to do their research, it will be SKT, so it will be interesting to see what they can pull out tomorrow. Where do Fnatic go from here? That's the yeah. question. They've won the European splits three times running now. Clearly, they are the number one team in Europe. No doubt about that. And, you know, there's a lot of teams out there that may try and debate it, but the fact is they have won that playoffs. Yes. They have won that tournament every single time. Where do they go from here? What do they do? They came up against Royal Club, of course, in the semi-finals at Worlds and found themselves wanting 3-1 overall. Put up a good performance, but this time around, not really close against SK Taylor. Yeah, they... I think they need to get out of their their slump. It's hard to say that they are in a slump because they did win the European split, but they started off so strong. They almost need a new infusion of some kind. I don't want to say they need a roster change, but yeah. they need a change of some kind. Something in there. We'll find out maybe what it will be in the coming months. For now, though, we are going to send it back to Quickshot and the guys at the Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, guys. And a dominating performance from SKT. They were the heavy favorites going in. They delivered. Fnatic, again, we've highlighted those oddball picks, the oddball champions. They went with a very heavy brawl composition. Tried to pick fights. It didn't really work in the favor. Let's start with the Fisher. Pretty much what you just said. I mean, they went for a skirmish comp. They wanted. To, they knew they were going to be fighting all the time. They tried to pick some champions who could snowball, maybe a vein. Potentially, if you got some kills early on, regulars could try and one-on-one -on -one everyone, maybe get something for Fnatic. Um, overall, though, it didn't work. And just to touch on the thing we talked about with Source before this game, I just noticed him here in the end. He was actually smiling. His manager was smiling as well. I think they knew going into this game how hard it would be, and I think they were just glad to actually play against SKT. Well, the thing about it, though, is that part of the composition, and we were talking about this on the desk while the game was going on, was that it was dependent on Nocturne ganking some of the side lanes in order to win these skirmishes. And the problem with using this was if we actually look at the composition from SK Telecom, Shivana, Kha'Zix, Thresh, Sivir, and Nidalee, these are all high escape champions post six, and mo the solo lanes will hit six before Nocturne will. So it's really difficult to use that ult, actually, because just the lanes themselves are very slippery. 
So I don't think Fnatic were actually looking for big team fights. No, no, in just year. in terms of yeah. the ganks on exactly. the lane. Exactly. I, mean, I think the Nocturne was just for we we gonna fight you yeah, one yeah. on one or two and two, and then Nocturne is gonna join in and try and turn things around. That was the they could have picked Pantheon as well, for instance. Right, but the escapes from from SK oh, yeah, Telecom indeed. from all the lanes indeed. made it very difficult. Yeah, I believe Frick wants to chime in. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's not just even the fact that they were escaping. It's the fact that SKT were were picking fights all the time. An interesting stat from this game was that. Every single one of the carry lanes at 10 was winning for Fnatic in terms of minion kills, right? Soaz was up in, against his lane opponent, Peke up against his lane opponent, Reckless up against his lane opponent. The thing is, that's SKT giving up minions to go do other things. And Fnatic's caught in lanes killing minions, so they're up 5 CS, then, well, there's four Koreans in my lane set and they die. And it was like a bunch of that all the time, where, where SKT shows up and Fnatic's still farming minions and, and they get caught out. Pretty much ties in what I wanted to say here. Um, if you compare just the play style of both teams and just any Western team compared to what's going on in Korea, it just shows how value, uh, valuable analysts and coaches are and, and how much more the game is going about how you play it and how good are you playing at like these micro level type of things. Like You could be the best mechanical player in the world, but you can just see that how much more important strategy is getting. If we go back to Season 2, when we were playing at a really high level, it was all about literally just, okay, we'll farm for 20 minutes. Whoever farms best is a really good player. Then we'll start fighting each other. Whoever wins that fight wins the game. It's no longer about that. So I just can't wait for the Western scene to get more coaches and more uh, analysts. Yeah, I have to just kind of completely back you up on that one. Uh, you know, Jat was talking about Fnatic needs like a change. And to me, it's like, well, yeah, get a coaching staff. You look at a team like SK Gaming, who's not necessarily the best individually skilled, but they rocketed to the top of the standings out of nowhere with a brand new lineup because you got guys like N-Rated who are like, let's think about how to play the game properly. And this team skyrocketed in skill. I think Fnatic needs that as well. And the rest of the teams that want to compete on the world stage. We'll have to see what they do to rectify their uh, problems in terms of winning some of these bigger matchups. So just to reiterate where we sitting in the tournament. The Taipei Assassins, they crashed out in the group of stages, going 0-4. and four. The only team they lost to was Fnatic, who have not crashed out in the semi-finals. The only teams they lost to was, of course, the North Americans, who took them out, and uh, obviously now SKT. I do want to highlight Bengi. Bengi really showed up in that series. He went 14-2-10 over his two games. This is a player that had very little positive impact uh, over in, in, in Ogen and in Masters and things like that. What's your take on Bengi and how he's playing? Well, I mean, when we came in and I was talking about Bengi, it's, I, we, I was highlighting how he needs to move away from more of a, a vision control style that he had at the Season 3 World Championships and subsequently, and move because of the utility mid lanes these days, or mid lanes that take a long time to ramp up, like Nidalee, and the, the burden now falls to early game junglers like e Elise, Lee Sin, Kha'Zix, these things that have a lot of kill pressure on the lanes. He needed to step up and get those kills. And that's exactly what he's done. I mean, it's really fantastic. Yeah, really, really showing through. The rest of SKT not really showing any weakness in their play. We didn't really know what to expect from the level of SKT coming in, even though many considered, uh, the majority of people expect them to be the favorites. What do we think in terms of SKT versus the opposition? Is SKT still in a slump or are they still just that far ahead that even in a slump, they can beat uh, some of the rest of the world's best. I mean, you can't judge their slump until they play against Korean teams again yeah. that actually punish these mistakes. I mean, a lot of the mistakes that SKT make, we probably don't even see. It takes like these very high skilled, in strategy terms, type of teams to really start exploiting that and, and it's just not here. If any team is going to beat SKT in this tournament, it's going to be OMG and that won't be by outsmarting them. It probably will be by outplaying them in these skirmishes or just being uh, out brawling them in team fights. But purely in, in type of, type of uh, quote-unquote macro-level strategy, <laughs> um, yeah, SKT has, uh, has everybody's number. Well, we'll have to see how that pans out tomorrow. With that win locking down the semi-final, let's chat to two of the winning players. We'll head over with a quote from the classic Winnie the Pooh. I wonder what Piglet is doing, thought Pooh. I wish I were there too. Be doing it too. <laughs> now it's time for that interview. So, dear sharks, hew, 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 it's over to you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank you very much for that quick shot. And I'm very well, uh, happy to welcome Pumendu and Piglet to the interview lounge and once again assisted by Homin for the translation. First off, congratulations. What an incredible game you guys did so well. The very first question I want to ask is generally, you played Fnatic yesterday. What did you focus on? What was the strategy to take them down again today? Uh, 우선 그 후나티 상대로 이런 대단한 승리 축하드리고요. 어제 한번 후나티랑 붙고 오늘 또한 붙었는데 오늘 경기 준비할 때는 어떤 전략을 준비했는지 설명 좀 해주세요. 
어, 저희가 라인전에서만 안 진다면 푸나틱 경기에서 이길 수 있을 것 같아서 일단 강 라인전에 힘쓰는 걸 위주로 했고요. 저희 본라인 같은 경우는 상대방 옐로우스타 선수가 레오나를 잘 쓰기 때문에 어, 뱀픽에서도 그랬듯이 레오나 갖고 가, 레오나를 배나던가 갖고 가면 카운터 칠수 있는 캐릭을 많이 준비했어요. Uh, so we thought that if we focus on our lane phase, um, we, could ha we could play the game really easily. So for our bot lane, we were aware that on um, Yellow Stars, Le Leona is very strong. So we were either trying to ban it, or if, even if they do take Leona, we were trying to counter it with our champions. Let's talk a little bit more about the picks, and um, I want to ask Piglet, when they saw Reckless locking in that vein, we know how much you love Vayne and how good you are on her. How did you react to it, and how high do you rate that, that champion for Reckless? 그 이제 레클 선수가 이제 베인을 이 경기 때 골랐는데 아무래도 베인은 피글 선수의 가장 주 챔피언이잖아요. 잘한 챔피언이고 그래서 레클스가 베인 골랐을 때 어떤 생각 들었어요? 어 저는 우선 그 푸나틱 원딜 분이 베인 하시는 걸 보고 베인을 픽 하시는 걸 보고 아 얼마나 잘하는지 보자 그냥 이런 생각이었어요. Okay, so when I saw Reckless lock in vain, I was like, okay, let's see what you got. <laughs> and um, what did he have? How was the experience playing against it? 그래서 해보니까 좀 베인 좀 잘한 것 같았어요. 어, 제가 볼 때는 그게 만약에 1대 1로 됐을 때는 1대 1로는 충분히 잘한 선수 같은데 이제 좀 멘탈이 약하신 것 같아서 만약에 멘탈만 많이 기르시면은 더 잘하실 수 있을 것 같아요. I think Reckless 1 vs 1 skills with Vayne are very good, but I think his mentality is not that strong. So I think he needs to train, uh, train his mentality more to play Vayne. Okay, well, now that we're on the topic of bottom lanes, tomorrow versus OMG versus Sun and Alan, you've played them already, and well, it's a very strong bottom lane as well. Who men do? What do you think of that bottom lane matchup tomorrow? OMG的团队是非常强的。特别是OMG的团队是非常强的。特别是OMG的团队是非常强的。特别是OMG的团队是非常强的。特别是OMG的团队是非常强的。特别是OMG的团队是非常强的。特别是OMG的团队是非常强
Take a look at this. That is uh, Fnatic, of course. Well, the crowd is definitely getting behind them. Oh, yeah. Definitely got the support of the home field. Thanks with respect to the crowd. I mean, it's been like this through the entire tournament. They've been cheering for everyone, especially for Fnatic. Also for Cloud9, so just massive respect to the crowd. Yeah, the one thing I really like about the French crowd is that we're getting behind the foreign teams as well. We actually heard exactly. them chanting SKT earlier, uh, singing happy birthday to Fake Cakes. For everybody uh, that had a birthday except Fake <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I really have been very impressed with this crowd. It's so good to see an international tournament where the fans not only really support the home team, but respect all, all the teams that are present too. That's awesome. The number of times we've seen SKT flags and, and fake a senpai, please don't hurt me, <laughs> posters <laughs> is definitely great. I yeah. can't wait until it transitions to something you see a lot in football where uh, every uh, supporter has a, a memorabilia. Maybe Mandy should start sharing his props with the uh, <laughs> numerous fans so they can all hold How up. How can a, he share them if they're always being used <laughs> on set. Yeah, and I especially love when they get behind certain players as well, right? When they were chanting for Peke, like when he got the first couple kills and like on the jungle invades whatnot. Like any of those high points where they're like going above and beyond for like a specific guy, like the happy birthday, right? Like all of that is just, it's unique and it's awesome. I mean, getting your name chanted feels pretty awesome. Yeah. I had that happen in the NALCS with like 30 people and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we didn't move this one along. So with three amazing days of games in our match history, it is time to take a look at the bracket as we now know who is juking it out in tomorrow's finals. After winning their semi-final series today, both OMG and SK Telecom T1K will face off tomorrow in our All-Star Invitational Final, which is a best of five. And sadly, all things must eventually come to an end. And tomorrow will mark our final day of matches for All-Star Paris 2014. We'll kick the day off with the much-awaited 1v1s and 2v2s. So tune in to see the top of the tops, the king of the jungle, the mightiest mid, and the best duo lane. That will be followed by the Invitational Final Best of Five series as OMG will face off against SK Telecom T1K for a chance to be crowned the All-Star Paris 2014 champions. Those matches will begin on Sunday at 1 p.m. Central European Summertime, which is 4 a.m. Pacific. I would like to say thank you to our special guests, both Monte Cristo and Crepo, for joining us. Crepo, Crepo. <laughs> and for Shocks, uh, Deficio, Freak, D-Man, Joe, Jat, Kobe, myself, and the entire All-Star Broadcast crew, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow.